What's going on guys, Arava here, and welcome back to a brand new video today on F1 2017. And today we're checking out F1 2017 using a Toby Eye Tracker, specifically the Toby Eye Tracker 4C. The guys at Toby Gaming hooked me up with one and have kindly sponsored the video as well. So if by the end of the video you guys like what you've seen and fancy picking one up for yourself, you can use the link in the top line of the description and you can use the code Arava at checkout for a discount as well. They'll also be directly supporting me. So again, you can use the code Arava at checkout with the link in the description for a discount on the Eye Tracker. 4C. So enough chit chat, let's get into this. So before we get to the actual racing quickly, just going to show you guys how it actually works and integrates into F1 2017 with the menu, because it's actually in the main menu as a setting you can actually activate. So once you've actually plugged in the device and calibrated it, you can turn this setting on. You can see you can adjust the sensitivity. You can also do head tracking technically, but I've just gone with the just normal eye tracking. So the device, once you've set it up, will basically just look at where your eyes are actually moving and will actually adjust the screen to where your eyes are actually looking. It's kind of like eerily weird in a way to get, kind of get used to, first of all. And you can adjust the sensitivity and everything like that. And once you've done that, you're good to go. So without further ado, let's get into a race. We're going to do a five lap race around the Japanese Grand Prix. It's Sebastian Vettel, seeing as we do have the Japanese Grand Prix uh, soon upon us as the next real life race weekend. And hopefully this race will be a good showcase of how it actually works. So here we are transitioning into the race, pre-race. And you can see already the eye tracker is actually active as we're sat in this little intro screen in the cockpit before we even get to the race and you can see as we move about this as the screen moves about that is what my eyes are naturally actually looking at at the screen so here we go to five red lights for the Japanese Grand Prix you can see I'm looking at my right hand side to get the revs correct and the five lights are out and we're underway here for a five lap race around the Japanese Grand Prix and you can see the camera obviously is going to be moving about a little bit more actively than you may see my normal videos as obviously this device is tracking where my eyes are going you can see through turn one already coming in handy a little bit as we look to the right hand side trying to suss out where Hulkenberg was and the same thing with Kevin Magnus and you can see as we try and go side by side with these AI cars the eye tracker can technically help you out in terms of determining how much room you've got you know instead of just focusing on the proximity arrow and basically judging with spatial awareness you can actually physically look at where the car is still on the right hand side and kind of judge for yourself and it gives you a bit more of a better perspective now at the same time looking around looking to the apex this is a big part of where Toby Gaming thinks you're going to be able to use the eye tracker to your benefit in terms of not only just an experience of using an eye tracker is it you know in itself it is quite an experience because it kind of takes you aback I said it it kind of is kind of weird to get used to uh, definitely was the case for me it's kind of very weird to actually look towards the apex and the screen actually moves obviously in real life that would be the case you have a inbuilt <laughs> eye tracking as it were but obviously in the game especially with the camera settings I use usually it's a very static screen so nothing really changes it's you know it's a case of you're looking off in the far distance but for the screen to actually move to the apex as you look at it is a very surreal experience if you're not used to it. Of course, if you've used eye tracking before, you may be very uh, used to it and may, may be very comfortable uh, with it, but uh, it was definitely a new experience for me. And you can see that motion a lot more clearly as we go through the final chicane of Suzuka. Uh, generally, I felt through slower corners, the, the eye tracking was a bit more obvious to the actual screen. Obviously, while I'm driving, I'm just looking at where I want to go next, basically. I'm not even thinking about the fact my eyes are being tracked, and in my peripheral vision, I can see the cameras shaking about, but really, in reality, that kind of just fades away in the recording it's a little bit more obvious the camera is moving around but whilst you're racing it feels very natural that you're just looking towards the apex but you can see in the s section uh, getting a little bit more obvious at where my eyes are looking i'm looking at the back of the Toro Rosso to the apex now you can see i'm looking at the actual car itself trying to suss out how much space i have so instead of as i said relying on your spatial awareness of okay the car i can't see is somewhere over there you can actually look a little bit more physically at the car still whilst you're going side by side which is also quite a nice thing in terms of just appreciating yeah, how, the, how the game looks as well if you want to look at the Toros a little bit longer but um, as I was saying a part of the kind of what Toby Gaming thinks that iTracker will do for you apart from just the experience of it because it definitely was an experience but they also think it can improve in terms of your lap times in terms of going around the circuit because once you get used to the iTracker obviously there will be a learning curve of getting used to driving like this but once you do get used to it obviously in real life you, you, you would be looking at the apex you're not going to be just looking at a static screen if you're in the cockpit of a 
real F1 car or a real car, you're looking towards the apex, you're going to be moving around and your screen, quote unquote, will be moving around and looking at where, where you want to go. And that will help you actually navigate the course or wherever you're going because you can kind of look at the apex and judge how much more speed you can take in. You can get more kind of a better judgment of the line you're taking perhaps and you can therefore maybe take more speed into the corner. Now, testing this out around Japan, it was kind of, I felt like it was helping in a way in terms of AI to AI racing for sure in terms of giving me that kind of extra added benefit of being able to see where they're going. You can see as you can see Hulkenberg and Ocon go side by side into turn one, trying to suss out a move and a line of where we can go around the outside of Hulkenberg. And you can see the left-hander trying to go around the outside and that really does help us out there judging how much space we've got. And that looked like a very easy pass. Now in reality, that was a bit of uh, thro uh, feathering the throttle and having to judge the space around me. For the very split second, my car gets alongside Hulkenberg. You saw the screen move towards Hulkenberg as that's where my eyes were looking as I was kind of worried about if I have the room on the left-hand side. And it's just much easier then to actually judge, okay, I've got that much tarmac between me and the next car, so I can do this. I can plant the power down. I've got this space. I'm not going to hit him, and then we can get on with the next move. So you can see it helped us out in that aspect in terms of going side by side with the AI. Also, I'm just going to cut this in. This is a different version of this race, and this is using the clean UI setting in the Toby Eye menu uh, on F1 2017. And you can see what I mean by clean UI. You can't see the usual heads-up display. It's a little bit faint, and you have to actually look in the top left corner or the top right corner or bottom right corner to actually see the UI. So you can race with a completely clean screen and just see everything ahead of you. And when you want to actually look at the specific information you want to see from the heads-up display, you simply look with your eyes at the part of the screen where they would usually be, and it will pop up there. So a bit of a different experience. Personally, for me, I just enjoyed having the heads-up display uh, out there the entire time because I'm too used to that. But if you are one of those people that have maybe wanted to have a clean UI system, you can still have the benefit of having that information the heads up display but it's just tucked away uh, before you to kind of actually look at in the top corners or the bottom corners so you can see now closing up on S-Man Ocon now through 130R flat out there rich mix at the moment here on lap three doing uh, pretty good progress in terms of our actual uh, in, the, in terms of the actual race we started P18 I think it was so almost last to, to question mark challenge here at Japan in a five lap race and we're up into P8 now so pretty damn good progress there pretty much matching if not bettering what Sebastian Vettel did in real life at the Malaysian Grand Prix you can see also there looking into the mirror is also uh, an added benefit of the eye tracker as I look left to wanting to look at the mirror the, get, the game camera will actually shift towards the mirror so instead of having a bit of an annoying tiny mirror to look at that's not very useful most of the time in these F1 games it actually kind of you can actually physically look directly at the mirror and it will sort of help you out and you can see going through the S section now uh, in a bit of clean air and you can see the camera undulating a lot more now as my eyes aren't looking towards the car they're physically just looking at each apex, uh, apex as we go along and you can see definitely the sense of speed is also a lot better so that's also an added uh, kind of experience we'll get with the eye trackers just the sense of the speed in the F1 car is a lot more. Definitely did make a little mistake there to the hairpin going a little bit wide and then looking towards the apex, trying to you know, find the apex that I completely missed there it was a little bit uh, off-putting. But then as we move on towards the last lap of the Grand Prix, I'm going to switch it on to cockpit cam because I know there'll be people who are interested to see how it works in cockpit because, of course, the T cam's all well and good, but also you would imagine the eye tracker should come in handy also with the actual cockpit cam itself, as I mentioned earlier, when you're in you know, a real-life car, you're in cockpit mode, as it were, and you're going to be looking at the apex from the actual cockpit view itself. And you can see in cockpit view, the actual eye tracking itself is not as obvious or, uh, on the actual recording of this screen in terms of where my eyes are looking because obviously the distance where my eyes are looking are a lot less when you're in cockpit cam because you're constantly looking kind of forwards and pretty much I'm looking at the apexes which are kind of between basically the chassis of the car and the left and, uh, left and right tyres basically. So you'll see the kind of camera moves just a tad at every single apex but then you can see it very obviously moves right and left as I look at the mirrors so again in cockpit view it's even more useful than a t-cam really if you're looking at the mirrors because obviously in cockpit cam you can see pretty much I can't even see most of my mirror uh, I can only see the rear wing pretty much of that Ferrari so when you actually want to look into the mirror and let's say you're in pro mode maybe if you're doing the the, the season pro mode in F1 2017 or you're just one of those people that doesn't want to look back and you want to get that kind of uh, as it were quote-unquote full simulation kind of a uh, 
kind of effect when you do the when you play the game. You can use the eye tracker, and that's the way you can actually use your mirrors to benefit rather than just clicking that button very easily and looking back behind you, basically. And you get more of a realistic experience, really, you know, because obviously real life drivers don't have a back button to look behind. So you can see we're coming through the final corner. We got up into P8, so pretty noble effort, I think, getting used to everything with the eye tracker here as we come across the line. So that is been the Toby Eye Tracker 4C in action on F1 2017. Once again, guys, if you did enjoy what you saw and you fancy picking uh, one up for yourself, then you can use the link in the top line of the description and you can use the code Arava at checkout for a discount. That'll also help me out directly and support me in that way. And uh, big thanks to Toby Gaming for sponsoring the video. It's always very, very cool when I can do a sponsored video, but it's still to do with F1 uh, 2017 and the F1 game that you and me both kind of love playing and watching. Um, so really, really big thanks to them for sponsoring the video and a really p a cool piece of kit. I definitely will be using this a lot more. In terms of an experience, this thing is absolutely awesome. Like it's also just weird for me to still comprehend that I'm just sat here in my racing chair with my wheel and the Toby Eye Track is just set up there in front of me. And you know, it's just looking at my eyes. It's scanning the, 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 the space between us, looking at my eyes, looking at where they're going and it can pick up the most subtle movements to the left and right. You may have seen throughout the video, there may be, maybe were a few little twitches where the camera kind of jolted and that's because it was picking up my eyes jolting for like a split second as I kind of just naturally moved my eye for a split second whilst I was racing. So it's very kind of weird, but also very, very cool. But anyway, that's going to be the end of the video, guys. If you have enjoyed it, hit that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. And you're here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I've been Ava. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.